So what we're seeing is basically the boundaries of every block and long term most of those walls won't be seen because every site is going to be redeveloped eventually and, and those walls will be the boundaries between two buildings which will be hard up against one another. That wall basically is holding up large portions of the building on the other side. You know, they, these walls have to be there because they're separate blocks. They have fire ratings and if there's a fire on this, this block, you don't want openings in the boundary wall that can spread fire onto another block, but also security, sound. I mean, the time that these buildings were built and for the scale that they are, brick was the most efficient material to build them out of, which is why this party wall is brick. Nowadays, because of the scale of these buildings, the most efficient material to build is, is concrete. These are precast panels, so they're, they're poured off site and they're just sort of plonked in, um, almost stacked up like Lego. So it's the quickest, quickest and most efficient way to build. I mean, definitely I don't think the, the walls are too much to worry about because they are a temporary condition that will disappear over time. I think the biggest problem that Braddon has is the potential gentrification of Braddon. So my name's Sean, I'm an architect and I'm a Canberran. I've lived here all my life. I'm a PhD student at the moment. I'm studying the character of Canberra places. Now I just do houses, but I used to do apartments. So, you know, this scale of building is kind of quite familiar to me. And one of the things that always struck me is that every time we do an apartment building, there'd be so many people in the community that object to what we were doing. They don't like it for whatever reason and it struck me because I wanted to understand why did they dislike these buildings and from time to time some of the objections you'd hear people would say this is not what Canberra is about or this doesn't feel like Canberra and it seemed to me that the thing that really lacks in these apartment buildings or not all apartment buildings but definitely some of them is the connection between these buildings the character of these buildings and the character of what Canberra is as a city or a place or a landscape. I mean, I think there's all kinds of opportunities, temporary opportunities for these walls. It's a great blank canvas for street art. In this instance, we've turned into, an, into a green wall. This bit here is actually quite cool. Even though it was done by, you know, the same developer, they're separate buildings. Um, and so they've kind of tackled this idea of the party walls and all the boundary walls in a different way. They've actually have made a gap between the two and there's quite an intimate little alleyway and this is part of that, you know, how does the building you know, suck the public realm into it. This idea of a party wall and you build up to it is kind of like the suburban fence, you know, between two houses and you put planting in between, it becomes a barrier between two separate buildings. This does the opposite, it creates a void between two buildings where, both, where the void is shared by both buildings and it's shared by the, by the public as well. You know, a lot of people in Canberra sort of say developers are all about making as much money as they can, but they're kind of a product to a, a bigger situation in Canberra, which is about the cost of land, the cost of building, the high cost of purchasing property. Um, so it's understandable. I mean, sometimes architects, we get frustrated working with developers, but you can understand the fact that they spend so much money on these blocks and they have to develop them in usually a fixed period of time. Um, and to even get a, make a buck, they have to squeeze in as many apartments as they possibly can. That means the challenge for architects is how do you do that without making the block feel like it's overdeveloped or unfriendly or lacks that good public amenity. Braddon's a good example of some of the challenges. It's an urban place and we're in the public realm at the moment, so we're on the footpath, people are walking past, the public use this. But the majority of these buildings are apartment buildings, which are people are concerned about privacy and, and sound. So the key is balancing good amenity of these buildings plus public amenity. People who are asleep at 10 o'clock at night, they don't want to hear people in restaurants downstairs. I think you want to make sure that those opportunities still exist, that, it, that the street is a public place and that public activities can happen both day and night. So I think the bigger problem for Braddon is, is this character of Braddon, is it, is it a natural character or is it sort of a character that's been provided by the developer and it's now taken up by the citizens? Mm -hmm.